Kia ora and welcome to my channel. My name is Carla and I'm coming to you from the east coast of the North Island of Aotearoa, New Zealand. And this is my channel where uh, I talk about um, sewing, knitting, crochet, spinning, dyeing and whatever else. <laughs> so my channel's name is Sew Knit, Create and Repeat. Um, and that's also the name of my Instagram account, uh, which you can follow if you like. And yeah, that's about it. Today I'm coming to you at just after 7am in the morning. I've been up for a couple of hours. And it's going to be a hot cracker of a day. So um, because in New Zealand we're in our summer. So I'm going to get this done and then I'm going to whip into town to get some plants and then I'm going to do some gardening. Uh, I've got a lot to show because uh, we had Vlogmas in December so I didn't podcast in December. Um, most of you probably watched that anyway um, and then I felt like I didn't really have a lot to show and then all of a sudden now I feel like I've got lots to show so I need to get it done otherwise February is going to be crazy. Um, so, well, we'll start with what am I wearing? These are the Dunedin Dungarees, which were designed by the Sewing Revival, which is a pat indie pattern designer in New Zealand. Sorry, I've got that window open, it's hot. Um, and I made these on New Year's Eve <laughs> while my family were here. They'd all gone out to do a few bits on their own and I just needed some alone time so I came in here and I made these. I just purchased this fabric from our local craft shop. And I love them. I'm embracing... You know, I, I felt quite um, unsure about them because I was like, yeah, as you all know, I'm conscious of my weight and how I look and I've had that many compliments on them I'm not going to get myself into a flap about it. So that's my first finished object. And oh yes, I have another one. So two days ago, so the same time I bought this fabric, I also purchased some um, other fabric at the same time. And I made these, which I wore yesterday, so you'll have to forgive them all crumply now, but they are the Winslow Clots by Helen's Closet. I've made two of these before, but I made them with the zip enclosure at the back, um, but I decided that I'm not wearing them anymore because they're too tight, so why not make the hack with the elastic back? This fabric is also very narrow. It's only like 100, 110 uh, centimetres wide. Uh, same with this one here. Um, so, um, <laughs> excuse me while I do that. I knew I might not quite have enough, so I just found I had these um, leftovers of this linen. And I've just popped that in the pleats at the front, and the back is just plain. As per usual, I've made them slightly too big around the waist. I tried them, they were good, they were nice and fitting. And then of course, I go up and down and weight, like bloating and stuff, and I put them on to wear yesterday, and they kept slipping down, but never mind. I ain't taking them in because I've sewn the elastic. I do that because I find um, that may have actually stretched them a little bit anyway, actually, that bit. Otherwise, I, even though it's anti-roll elastic, it always still seems to roll and it, it drives me nuts. Says those. Now, I don't have any knitting finished objects. Oh, one other <laughs> finished one. Uh, a few days ago, a friend of mine, she works somewhere and, um, which I won't say, and at this house and they got rid of a whole lot of um, upholstery fabric scraps from different things. It's quite a large house. 
and she asked me if I wanted some of the bits. So oh, I got this really heavy duty cotton fabric. It's thick, real thick. And I made two sort of bolster cushions for our bed. <laughs> and I just put buttons on the back. It was no easy feat getting this, getting uh, one, two, three, four layers through the machine because you got um, that side and then you've got these two overlap and then you've got the um, tassels in it as well and that was a machine but we got it there so I haven't used them yet because I wanted to show you guys so they'll go on the bed today <laughs> extra decorative pillows that Evan will just really love to throw off the bed and I've just used old bed pillows to stuff them with and it's given them nice weight although well, heavy anyway so I think that's it for finished objects spin uh, sewing I do have some spinning that I'll show you might as well show you all the things that I've completed first and then we'll work on to the whips um, I've got this one, which is, so this is a spinning one. So back in December, if you watched my vlogs, you would have seen that I purchased a secondhand Ashford Traveller wheel. So that'll be my second wheel. And I wanted to just try it out and see, see what it spun like. Um, and I had recently purchased this fiber from um, another one of our craft shops but it doesn't say what breed the sheep is it just says it comes from the Kairanga flock so it's so obviously oh, I don't know so there was a natural black and a natural cream and I just applied them together so there's that and then I've literally just finished spinning um, a merino silk fiber that uh, my mother-in-law got me not this Christmas but the Christmas just got but that went before um, and yeah here you go merino silk it's lovely and soft there's not quite 100 grams there. We we had an accident um, in the form of Digger. Um, I think I told you guys about the day that he was left at home a little bit too long unattended and he got into my mohair and annihilated my mohair that I had for a test knit. Um, well, he also ate the first bobbin that had this on it and some of the fiber so i managed to save the first bobbin i just rewound it onto a new bobbin because it had teeth marks all over it and when i went to spin up the second bobbin some of the fiber was just too matted from him getting into it so i didn't quite use all the fiber from the second one so that first bobbin still has a bit left on it but um i'm doing another Ashford merino silk blend in different colour at the moment on the on the traveller. Um, so I will, if there's anything left over of that, I'll ply them together, and if not, I'll just chain ply what I've got left. So there's that one. That one. Where am I going to put you? You can go there, and then. <laughs> I decided to do some dyeing just because I haven't touched any dyeing or anything for ages and I was like, oh, come on, just have a go, Carla. So I had a play around. I use the colours in these dungarees as inspiration for this, but I didn't actually have them with me when I did it. I just went off my memory. So this is my interpretation of <laughs> these dungarees. <laughs> but I love it. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. This is a DK weight and it's, um, what is it? I can't remember whether it's 85 
merino 15 nylon. I did purchase it to dye up as a DK sock, but I don't know whether that's enough nylon content for that, to be honest. So there's that one. And then the next day I did these ones. So these ones I'm calling um, uh, Tequila Sunrise. <laughs> You can see those. I just wanted to play with some colours that I wouldn't normally um, go for. <laughs> I actually quite like them. <laughs> and then last but not least with the dyeing, I was watching Hohi Lokitelli's um, latest podcast and she was showing a few of her latest designs. Um, and she showed a one skein shawl which I can't remember the name of it. it. Starts with A. I think I think I've got it in my description notes. Ah, my nose is itchy. Sorry. Um, which I loved. So I thought as soon as she releases that pattern, because I don't think it's released, I'm going to have it. So I decided to dye up some yarn to um, <laughs> to go for that. So this is just in my sock my natural sock not natural natural colored sock it's got now the colors i know when i photographed it the colors didn't really show true there's the, they're more of a teal um teal almost teal denim gold spruce so those are the so i think That'll look nice. So it's got some speckling in there. I just played around with base base colours and then over over speckling. I really I really like it actually. It reminds me of a really cool batik dyed dress I had years ago. Very similar. So there you go. Right back to the knitting. I spent most of December, <sighs> can I just check that I'm recording, I want to find that I'm just like, oh thank god for that. Um, I spent most of December working on a test knit, uh, which I didn't finish, so um, I don't know how much to say here because I don't know what's going on for the designer. Something may have happened and yeah, but there was no communication from her. And um, I had emailed her and updated her with my progress at time and I still didn't get any reply. And I just felt really isolated and disconnected. There was no, no sort of connection with other um, testers or anything. And I'm knitting it um, with a strand of lamb's wool and mohair held together. And now it's quite a big jumper. And it's heavy and it's fluffy. We've had unprecedented, no, not unprecedented, but we've had some record high temperatures for December. Um, no aircon in the house. And then I had uh, the worst hay fever in my in years, in fact, apparently the pharmacies were saying everyone's struggling with it this year over the Christmas period and New Year's. It's settled down for me, but now I'm still on pills, but um, and my eyes are still itchy, but not like I was a mess. I was really unwell with it. Um, and having family here. I thought, you know, that I'd still be able to just sit and quietly knit, and you can't. It's just full on the whole time. And I had people here for a total of about 10 days. And then we had friends and family popping in from other places, from other things and stuff. So I just had no time to knit. So I'd got to the point where I'd finished the body, I had picked up and done all the neck um, finished around the neckline and I'd started on the first sleeve 
um, but I just wasn't going to get there and I stressed about it and then I thought well I haven't heard from her I'm not I'm not going to put myself out there and stress out something may have happened I don't know so I'm not gonna you know pass judgment there um, so I'm not going to say who she is even though I probably have mentioned it in the past and I'm not going to show you the project until I've finished it and she's released the pattern um, yeah so I'll just leave that aside but that did take up a huge chunk of my crafting time um, and then after Christmas and everything like that I I really started to feel quite flat you know once everyone had left I was tired I kept thinking you know I don't have much time left in the holidays and and, and there was no it wasn't to do with my family there it's just always happens after Christmas whether you've got family or not you know you know you've got all this time off and then all of a sudden the rest of your holidays just seem to hyper speed up so I cast on a pair of socks um, I cast on Kelly Menzies Athenaeum socks. They're close to my heart, these socks, because I helped name them. <laughs> when she showed us um, on her Discord channel, she showed us uh, this new design. And um, oh, I thought they looked like books on a shelf, library books on a shelf, being a librarian is the first thing I thought. And um, and I suggested the name Athenaeum because that's <laughs> kind of is the name for an old library. It's also the name of our library software that we use in my library. So that's how come I knew what it was called. And so hence, that's what they're called. Have you noticed they're not just not connected to the yarn? I'll tell you a story about that in a minute. So I'm using the um, some of my hand dyed yarn. I'm onto the heel flap on the first one. Um, it's a really cool, really cool design. And you should be able to see there. You can see what I mean. Um, so what happened was last week, I was about to go and mow the lawns quite early in the morning to beat the heat. And I knew I needed to do poo patrol and a bit of a clean up around on the yard, bones and dog paraphernalia uh, before I mow the lawn. So I was looking for my AirPods so I could put some music on and just listen to some music while I was running around doing that. And I couldn't find my AirPods. And the first thing I thought was bloody digger. So I went around to the front to the room of requirement for the dog. And there, in the middle of the front lawn, was this. With some of the wool. And the wool we've got in our front garden, we've got these big grasses, and he's created a tunnel network through them where he takes things to chew. I had to get on my hands and knees and climb and crawl through and follow the yarn lucky it was dry there was no rain or it wasn't wet or anything in and out of all these things and gather it all up i managed to ball up that much and then i have balled up that much i've had to separate them it's just too hard and then i've just got a little bit more to do I also found my AirPod, I've got like a, a rubber case that goes around the AirPod case. I found that, so I kept looking and I found the AirPod case, AirPod's still inside it, a few teeth dents in it, but all intact, so that was good. I also found, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's called Lucas Pawpaw Ointment and it's in a red jar. It's basically like petroleum jelly with pawpaw in it. I don't know if it is petroleum jelly, but it's something like that kind of consistency. And um, that was open, cleaned out in the bushes. So he'd been having a great little time around my sewing area. He'd also stolen a pair of my sunglasses and chewed them up as well. I don't know when he'd done all this because I always think that, but I think what happens is if I'm out the back and I've kept the front door open, 
he's coming in and out of the front door just helping himself to bits and pieces. <laughs> Shit. Yes. So I'm having to be vigilant again with keeping everything up high. Um, hence that when I did finally get around to doing poo patrol, I found this very runny, sloppy, disgusting looking poo and I thought, Shit, what's Evan, what's, what's Evan been feeding Digger? Because I knew he just gets the same food here. And then the penny dropped. Mmm, it's slick. It's poor, poor. <laughs> and it's nothing in it. It's all natural, so it's fine. But he just had a good bowel clean out. Would have worked a bit like cast oil. <laughs> ah, so there you go. So that's one whip. Another whip I've started is a crochet one. So my daughter's friend is having a baby in June, June or July. And Jess asked me if I'd be willing to make something for her to give her. And um, we initially discussed, um, you know, hats and booties and things. And then it occurred to me I'd purchased this pattern a few years ago for when my friend got pregnant but thinking oh, I'll just learn to crochet and make it but none of it made sense to me at the time but since I've been working on the Battenberg blanket and I've sort of started to pick up on my crochet skills I put dug the pattern out again had a look at it and had a go and managed to make the hex skins so I'm making the be my baby blanket um, can't remember the person who designed it but I'll put it on the screen and we just purchased the wool from Spotlight because um, she uses drops and that would mean I'd have to order it from the UK and that just wasn't going to happen. So we've got three colours I'll just show you. We've got, I've got this many that I've made. So I've got plenty of time. So we've got that colour, that colour and that colour. And then I've got some other wool to make um, the little bees and and do the joining. <laughs> it's really enjoyable. So that's one. So that just sits in my um, my ottoman that I rest my feet on in the lounge, because Digger also stole one of these and the wool that was attached to it when I first started, and I found it spread out across the lawn. So I had to. He loves balls of wool. Next thing I'm making is uh, a Felix cardigan out of this cotton and sequin cone yarn. <laughs> I purchased this from a lady here in New Zealand. Um, if you are in New Zealand, her business is called Yarn on Cone, I think. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen. Um, and she imports these cones. She's awesome. I've uh, I made that green holy jumper and the red crochet top out of some that I purchased from her. So I decided I wanted. I've been wanting to make the Felix cardigan for a while because I just really like the style of it, not because it's super popular or anything like that that doesn't really bother me either way and I'm in the middle of a row but that's what we're looking like it's a nice loose drapey I'm working on the rib now I don't want it too long because it's for the summer and yeah I really enjoy it. it's a very relaxing So that's that whip. And then I decided that I needed a new craft. <laughs> and I follow Kate uh, from the last Homely House. I've been watching her for quite a while now. And she really got me quite inspired to... Um, 
have a go at English paper piecing. So I ordered some bundles from of fabric from Spotlight and I'll show you the others in a minute. And some paper pieces. I'm gonna do I'm doing diamonds. So I've made quite a few so far. These little diamonds. And I just, I pieced these three together because I just wanted to kind of see what my stitches were like. So anyway, there you go. Um, I love it. I really enjoy it. It's just something different to do with my hands. And these are the other fabrics I've got to choose from. <laughs> Oh dear, hang on. Where's the middle? The colours, I love Batik. These are Batik dyed and the colours are just amazing. So, <laughs> so this is what we've got. Hopefully you can see. That one looks like power shell. You get the idea. It's all quite exciting. <laughs> so yes, so that, that'll keep me busy. That'll keep me busy. And then um, I just have a couple of acquisitions to show you. Oh, actually, can you see my curtain? I made that. This is made out of old doilies <laughs> and, and napkins. If you can't see that properly, I'll insert a, a video. Um, yeah, so the same time as I bought that cone yarn, I bought another cone as well. This is 100% um, Shetland Knoll. The colour is Calypso, Calypso and it's 575 metres per 100 grams. So it's a lace weight. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I just like it. I might just, um, I don't know, would I wind it off? I don't know. We'll have it. We'll have a think about it. We'll have a think. If you've got ideas, let me know. Put that there. And then, I just thought I'd show you guys this. This is, um, I picked this up from our local craft store in December. Um, and I thought before, that's the name of the... This is a pin. I thought that was quite lovely. So I thought I'll keep that all together so I could show you before I put it away in my jewellery box. Um, I also ordered this book, which I haven't even had a chance to look at properly. I haven't done any reading these holidays. Uh, Kelly and Jane at the Unity podcast, which I think they're changing their name, but I'm not sure what they're changing their name to. Um, if they've decided by the time I edit this, I'll 
pop it up on the screen. They were talking about this on one of their podcasts and I thought, this is not saying that I'm going to necessarily start designing patterns, but just it's just interesting. Um, so I've got that. And then when I was Christmas shopping, I Christmas shopped for myself and I bought this, which is quite a lovely book. It's got lots of different quilting techniques and patchwork techniques in here and a few little projects. So that's quite a neat little book. And... Oh, there was one more thing. My friend dropped off a fadge full of um, alpaca fibre. So I um, there's some black and some brown. So I've started a separate video, which I'm going to show um, the uh, my journey because it's not my process because I've never done it before on um, washing and, and getting it ready to spin. And I have been spinning it. I'll show you. Oops, I'll show you what it, so you can see there's still bits of stuff in there. It's very lovely and soft and it's easy to spin. It's really nice. So yeah, so that'll be another video that'll be coming up at some stage. Uh, and I've also got a video that I haven't edited and put together yet, but it is, um, I, I oiled up and cleaned and oiled an overlocker and sewing machine the other day. So I just took, just went through the process of doing that. So yeah, so that'll be coming out soon too. Other than that, life-wise is cruisy as. <laughs> um, the end of the month is approaching quickly and I'll be going back to work soon. Um, but, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. I've just, I've been incredibly tired and um, that's the only thing that sort of makes me feel a bit panicky about going back to work is I just, when I'm fatigued, which I often am, that middle of the daytime and I can't go and lie down and I'm literally trying to hold my eyes open at work with kids around. Even if they're talking to you, I'm still, that's horrible. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh, here's another funny story for you because I'm full of funny stories. A few years ago, I... Um, I purchased a box lot of costume jewellery from a person who runs a storage facility in town and obviously whoever had this container had um, defaulted on their payments and so they were just selling off bits and pieces out of this container, this storage unit. And um, I did get a few nice little bits of sterling silver um, and a gold ring out of this box. But there was this little case and it had these gold balls in it. And I was like, how weird that you would have these gold balls in a case. And I tried Googling it and I'm part of a Facebook page. Or I'm a member of a Facebook page called Weird and Wonderful Secondhand Finds That Just Need To Be Shared. And I thought, oh, I'll take a photo and I'll send it in and I'll ask people if they know what they are. Because I was like, are they pure gold? Are they valuable? Are they, what are they for, you know? Twice I tried to and the admin of the pages or the mods didn't approve my post. And I was like, well, I'm not asking for a value of them. I just want to know what they are. And, and I was just like, oh, well, and I gave up on it. Anyway, this Christmas, my brother's here and he's here at home. And I said to him, he was in here talking to me while I was making, whoops, while I was making these. And I said to him, hey, 
and we were just talking about some of the bits and pieces in the room here and we were talking about these and he says oh we'll just do an image search on them so he took a photo of them in the case like this the kegel balls that's obviously why these admin wouldn't let it on their page these have probably been in somebody's And here's me. I'd even thought at one stage of taking them into the jewellers. <laughs> Can you imagine if I'd taken some Kegel balls into the jewellers? If you don't know what Kegel balls are, just Google it. I think it's K E G E L. <laughs> what a dickhead. Yeah, so that's me. I'm done. Yay been hanging over my head this doing this podcast <laughs> uh, so now I can plan my day gardening oh yes we've got a kitten <laughs> her name is Grogu she is 12 weeks old now and um, she is tiny 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 but she's thriving she's putting on lots of weight under our care and her and Digger are just such good mates still I still wouldn't leave the two of them unsupervised because you know she's still tiny and he's big and something might happen but yeah he's he's really good with her and she she runs off his legs and attacks his leg and then jumps off and bounces away and then he goes to get her and then he just watches her and <laughs> they're really funny so yeah um I think I'm just delaying the goodbye, but anyway, um, I will catch you again soon. And I hope you're all happy and safe and well, and I will catch you next time. <laughs> Kaki te.